Good morning. So just finished our 6.15 a.m. and 7 a.m. sessions. Thought I'd jump on and talk about something that's coming up a lot in one-to-ones in this week, which is kind of lack of structure, routine, slash snacking, comfort eating. And um, of course, like this is a really weird time. No one can actually ever have predicted this, um, or you could have been prepared for it, right? So of course, like my first thing is just to be a bit kind to yourself and not beat yourself up for snacking, for just being a bit out of routine. You know, it's only been, what, 10 days or so, eight days or so. So first off, just don't be too hard on yourself. Like, it's not gonna be perfect. Number two is, is what we've kind of come to is when I've had these one-to-ones in the last few days, the solution has been more simple than we thought. So when we actually look at it, most people aren't hungry when they were snacking, okay? and. Some people were, but if you're not hungry, you've got to consider afterwards getting real awareness and, and kind of something called urge surfing, essentially, um, which really allows you to slow down and think about, think about why you're eating. And I know it sounds really obvious, and sometimes people say things like, yeah, but I don't even feel like I'm there when I'm snacking. So it feels like someone's taken over my body and I'm eating and I, I'm not in control. Then afterwards I go, why the hell did I do that? And just know that, that's almost like a sabotaging voice, right? So the more you can understand that there, you might have like kind of just almost urges, voices if you like, that are telling you to eat, but they're not actually what you want to do. The more you can distinguish between them and slow down and ask a question of why I'm doing this, the better. So I'm gonna give you a few solutions to help you with this. So number one is making sure that you have protein foods handy Hi Dan, protein, food ha protein food's handy. These are things like eggs, um, meats, dairy, um, yogurts, to, to make sure that you're going for foods that are gonna physiologically fill you up. So these foods will impact your hunger hormones and, and create more of a satisfied feeling if there, is an, uh, if there is a hunger element to that, okay? Now, let's also make sure that we have some vegetables that are handy, fruits handy. Make them convenient to grab, almost more in your face than any other foods. Because convenience foods, when you're stressed and tired, are gonna be perceived as more rewarding than they actually are. Okay, so remember that. Convenience foods will be perceived as more rewarding than they actually are. When you're stressed and a little bit tired. This is because there's part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, which allows you to make long-term Decisions, it helps you with planning. It helps you with kind of managing what to do now in respect to long term. When you're tired and stressed, the research shows that your prefrontal cortex pretty much shuts down. So your ability to make a choice with long term, and that might be what people are saying when they go, oh, you know, I just feel like it's not me. You know, I just snack and I'm like, why did I do that? That will bring me on to point two in a minute. But this prefrontal cortex, we know that, so for example, I'll use the example of my, my daughters, you know, you don't develop the prefrontal cortex, hi Andy, till you're about five to seven years old, okay? So me telling my daughters right now that we can't go to the park, and they're like, why can't we go to the park? I wanna go to the park. I'll say, you know, we'll go in like four weeks time <laughs> or whatever, like that's, that's not enough to satisfy them because they have, they don't have the prefrontal cortex to, to kind of, go, oh, four weeks, I'm not, you know, yes, yeah, they have no sense of time either. So just consider that we are actually, when we're stressed, when we're tired, when we're not looking after ourselves, we are actually dampening that part of the brain. So it's not you, it's not your willpower, it's actually, this is a physiological thing, when we're tired, when we're stressed. So now, what can we do? So we've already talked about the food side of it. Making sure protein, vegetable foods are handy. Are you having three meals a day, structured meals? Now we can talk about more the self-care side of it. So the self-care side of it, if you, what the research shows is that things like meditation and sleep seem to reverse this, okay? So of course, if, you, if you're struggling to sleep, you know, a lot of worries right now, fear, anxiety, of course, meditation is something that, you know, I, I'll be honest, that initially I wasn't really into, I just thought, you know, I'm fine, I don't need that. Until I actually tried it, and it was, if I didn't call it meditation, but I, I feel like I should call it um, energy boost or just energy, like I'm going to get some energy. So I actually tell my daughter. Um, because this 
completely changes my state, even 10 minutes, even five minutes. And we have Caroline from Calm Quiet Space in our 28 day program. She does meditations for us live and recorded. Um, some that the ladies can use, I can use, and we can use together whenever we want. And just to put on, take five minutes for you. And, and I will say that the fact this is now research backed, <laughs> it kind of helps it for me too. But this pretty much reverses that tiredness, stress feeling in our prefrontal cortex, which allows us to make better decisions. So if you're able to make better decisions, just like that. So next time, when you're thinking in that situation, oh, you know, stressed, write down when you're feeling like you're going to go to snack, write down, literally, how am I feeling? Feel your feelings. Don't fight them, because quite often it's the thoughts about the thing that's the issue, not the thing. So you're beating yourself up for feeling tired. Hi, Mary. You're beating yourself up for feeling tired. You're saying, I shouldn't be tired. Why am I tired? When actually, if you just say, I'm tired, okay, what would you tell a, your best friend to do? What would you tell your best friend to do if they were tired? I won't even give you the answer to that, because you'll have a great answer for it. And if you took your own advice, that'd probably be a good thing. And it's something I, I have to remind myself of sometimes, because, you know, the first thing we do is we feel like, I need energy, I need to eat. I need energy, I need food. When actually the research would show if you overeat, that causes hyperglycemia, high blood sugar levels, that actually make, make you feel more sluggish. So we're actually doing the opposite to what we should be doing, which is interesting. So next time, so feel that feeling, that's number one. Number two, what would you tell a friend to do who was feeling that feeling? So I am tired. What would you tell a friend to do if they were tired? Take that advice and see how it works for you. I hope that helps. I hope that's simple enough. And if you have any questions on that, do let me know. And it's something that I struggle with too right now. Like, for example, I feel like I should be doing more. I could be doing more. But if you're not good, if you're not in a good place, if you're not well rested, you're not good for anyone else. That's kind of what you've got to remember. As selfish as it can seem sometimes, it is actually selfless. Hope that helps. Any questions, let me know. Have a great day and speak soon.